regreso aquí en Auto 060, una edición especial del evento Nissan 360 que se celebró en um, Newport Beach, en California, donde la Nissan, como decíamos y hemos escuchado en los primeros dos segmentos, presenta todos los productos que fabrica y vende alrededor del mundo, eh, los que ya están en producción, los que ya están en venta, pero también los prototipos y todas las tecnologías nuevas que tiene Nissan para el futuro. Y estando ahí, me tocó la suerte de estar en, el, en la ronda, en el web, como se llama en inglés, donde vinieron los periodistas del Japón, y entre ellos vino un periodista, un colega inglés que se llama Peter Lyon, que es eh, el eh, co-chair eh, del premio al auto mundial del año y con cual compartimos la experiencia de Nissan 360 y también un poco aprovechamos la oportunidad para hablar un poco más de cómo, cómo se ve la industria de los autos eh, de Estados Unidos desde Japón y algunos otros temas. Así que escuchemos la entrevista con uh, Peter Lyon eh, que realizamos durante el evento Nissan 360 allá en California. Peter, how are you? Um, he's, uh, you are the co-chair of the World Car of the Year Award. That's right, yes. And uh, I was uh, very honored to be accepted this year, too. So thank we're, you. We're if you had honored any to have you with us. That. We're honored to have you with us. Uh, thank you very much for that. And I was, um, I couldn't make it to Nissan 360 before on the American way, but I, I'm really lucky to join the Japanese way because it's more interesting being like a Japanese car manufacturer and like find you here too. So I'm, I'm happy for that. Yes, it's a. Uh, This event is the third one so far. They did the first one in San Francisco, the second one in Portugal. But this one is interesting in that they've created like a, a mini Disneyland inside an <laughs> yeah. airstrip, which is quite quite interesting. You've got the the uh, um, off-road course, which is very well done. You've got the up, so you can do hill climb and descent in yeah. the performance. Um, but I think what what people really want to see here are of course the cars they cannot drive in Japan because there are a lot of cars that you can't, yeah. special, ca special cars that are made for China, Indonesia uh, the Americas, Europe even uh, South America that we just cannot drive back, exactly. back in Japan so uh, that's very interesting and, and the opposite for me because I've been driving like the little cars like the little Japanese cars like the taxi cab and all that so it's very interesting for me So, in Nissan in, in, in Japan and in the world, really, I mean, it's, it's like second or, well, in Japan it's the third one, right? Toyota, Honda, and then Nissan? Well, Nissan is said to be second. To, Nissan and, to, and Honda are very close, but yeah. Nissan is, it sells a it's few more back. cars than, yeah. than Honda, yeah. Um, and, of course, Nissan have a lot more product coming out for, in the next few months, few years, yeah. something like 50 cars or something in the yeah, next I few years. Yeah, they say like one car every six weeks yeah, around the world. Yeah, it's pretty amazing. Pretty amazing. And, I mean... When you look at what Nissan's been doing recently, it's quite quite impressive. Not just the new cars that they're bringing out onto the market, but the way they're growing the brand. They're, they're, they're um, launching into racing. Now they are a, a main sponsor, uh, yeah, Infinity, Red Infinity Red, Red, main, Bull, yeah. Red Bull. Um, they're back in Australia now with the V8 supercars. They're competing in Europe with the uh, GTR GT3 at Nürburgring, for example. Um, they so maybe competing they at Le Mans uh, with the, um, the electric car. And maybe we'll come with NASCAR with the Altima or the Maxima. <laughs> Why not? Why not? Because that's, uh, that's, where, that's where they want to go. Because they've yeah. also, as you know, they've also created the uh, Nissan GT Academy, yeah. which is doing very well. And, and I'm very, very pleased to see how they keep growing that. They didn't just keep it as a, a gamer become real world racer type of thing. They're growing it. So that now, the, really first, the first gamer to become a real-world racer, of course, he stood on the podium at Le Mans the year after he, yeah. he won. That's incredible. He became, a, he became a champion. And now he's the test driver for their next-generation electric race car, the Zeod. That, that, can you imagine this guy's life? In, I think they're making a movie out of it, aren't they? Well, uh, they, they should. If they are, they should. I think they are. Yeah. But it's great to see you know, a young kid who is just loved playing games and now yeah. he's a real world racing driver getting on the podium yeah and so I think that, uh, and Nissan is smart uh, like reaching to those kind of people because they're the future drivers and buyers of cars right around the world yeah but I think one of the main the main things you see here uh, that everyone wants to drive the Japanese press want to drive are the big trucks yeah because they're quite different markets huh yeah very different I mean in Japan for the last especially for the last 10 years most manufacturers have been basically focusing on minivans and K cars. K cars yeah. are the small no, 660 yeah, yeah, yeah. Tiny, tiny cars. So when you look at the lineup of cars made by the Japanese manufacturers, the vast percentage are made up of minivans mm -hmm. and uh, mini cars. The, the, so you don't see many sports cars, you don't see many um, uh, coupes, for example. Uh, you don't see many... Well, they're, they're coming out with a few more SUVs, but 
it's really focused on minivans and K-cars. And now, what I'm very happy to see is Honda. What Honda's done in the last uh, six months, they said they're coming back to Formula One. Yeah. They are uh, going to announce the NSX very soon. Well, they've been showing us what they're going to do with it. Now they're going to bring it out to the market very soon. The technology in that is is quite the amazing. Hybrid car, yeah. Really great to see what's happening with the front the front wheel, the in wheel motors, the four wheel drive, the hybrid. It's got about 400 horsepower. It looks good. I think it's getting better each time we see it. Yeah. It looks better. Um, and of course, uh, they have a, a, a Type R as well that they're bringing out. It's at the Nurburgring now. They're trying to make it the fastest front-wheel drive car around the Nurburgring to beat the Megane RS. Yeah, so you know, they're, they're showing their, their pedigree, their racing DNA, because they, as you know, they were huge with McLaren 20 oh, yeah, years ago. Exactly. Yeah. Um, so that you know, they have all this uh, and knowledge and champ yeah, championships the, the under practice. their belt. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Mom, and all that. So, Peter, you've been living in Japan, I understand, about 25 years? That's right, yeah, and long time. <laughs> I've been an automotive reporter there. Yep. How is the, the, the Japanese uh, media and public in general perception of the U.S. market? Like, bigger cars, bigger roads, more traffic, more gas guzzlers. Uh, how, how do they see us? Here? Well, you, you've just basically uh, said it all in one sentence there, but what... What, what the Japanese see when they see an American car is there's still a slight perception, even though American cars have become a lot more reliable, a lot safer, they drive a lot better, they handle, yeah. they can actually corner now, <laughs> whereas up until 10 years ago, Jap yeah. most Japanese would not even think about an American yeah. car because it doesn't go around the corner very well. Exactly. But now they corner well, they're reliable, you know, they don't break down like they, they used to, they're not as big as they used to be, they're more fuel efficient. But the, the trouble is that the American name does not have a, a good sort of sound in Japan. It doesn't. It only sells maybe one to two percent of the market in Japan. It's very so small. Any particular uh, model uh, popular, um, that is popular there? GM not has really. probably <laughs> the best. The best uh, GM and Ford. Ford have some some cars. Of fo the focus is on the market now. Um, GM have a few cars. We're looking forward to the new Corvette. Corvette yeah. uh, everyone seems to be looking forward to that. Um, apart from that, there's not that many cars that sell, not many American cars sell well. And of course, you won't get any trucks in, in, in Japan yeah. because the roads will not take They, they won't even speed, right? Um, and, and see, I, I think when, when Japanese look at a foreign brand, a non-Japanese brand, it has to have some sort of cachet to it. It has to have some presence, some brand integrity to it. It has to, to be it. better. That's what they do. Yeah. yeah. So that's why French cars, for example, as they sell reasonably well but they don't have the the brand sort of uh, loyalty and strength that yeah, the, like the, the appeal, CDs, yeah. BMWs, Porsches have. See Japanese see German cars and they think one rank above uh, and so they that's why they pay the extra money but American cars they're, they're, they're big uh, most of them are big they're, they're, um, they're clumsy difficult to get around corners in Japan uh, but of course, when you come here, they, 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 the fit the they, they fit the roads. Yeah. yeah. What one thing you notice here that you don't really notice in Japan is when you come up to the stoplights in in the states, you come up and you're surrounded by a wall <laughs> of SUVs and trucks. <laughs> right, no. You can hardly see around. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. In Japan, you have its minivans and K cars. So it's a, it's a totally different mentality. Yeah. Very interesting event. So unfortunately, we run out of time here because mm. radio. I mean, it's killer yeah. right here. But um, so going back a little bit to the World Car of the Year award. It, I mean, they're not showing anything new here, but uh, do you see any candidates here? Um, any candidates here? I mean, the, the latest thing is the Q50, I guess, which is pretty good. The, the, Q, infinity. the Q50, but yeah. But it's not the world, world Car of the Year because it's no, not called everywhere, right? To, yeah, to be a candidate for the World Car of the Year, you, ha you have to be available on two continents and in five countries. Yeah. And basically, the way that most judges see... The, the, the awards, they want to look at the eligible cars in terms of not just design, handling, reliability, safety, and environmental issues. They want to see the car in terms of um, viability. It, can the normal man in the street buy, buy this yeah. car? Is it not too expensive? It has to be in a certain well, price value, range. A value, equ a value yeah. equation, yes. Yeah. So, it's very difficult for a car to win that, you know, is priced over, say, $60,000. Yeah. I, I think, because even if we have a great car, like, for example, the new Mercedes S-Class is seen to be a very, very high-quality car with the it's new amazing, autonomous yeah. driving system. Uh, but something that's priced over $100,000, some 
jurors might think, you know, great technology looks yeah. good, all of that, but you can't really put it at the top of your rankings because exactly. it's, it's uh, priced too high. Well, we'll so I, I think, but I think the cars that we have given the awards to have been worthy so far. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Um, yeah. Volkswagen has been big in the <laughs> latest years. Yeah, exactly. One thing, one thing that uh, I hope people notice is that we've been going for 10 years now, yeah. and when you look at the past winners, they've all been either German or Japanese. Which, no. which says something. Most jurors will say that the Japanese and the Germans are making the best cars no. at the moment. But I think the Koreans are coming along very quickly. Oh, the very Kia fast, and yeah. Hyundai are doing very well. Some of the design we see, the handling, the performance is wonderful. The safety measures are great. And um, also, I think there are some American cars that are coming a long way. I mean, for example, the, the Chevrolet Impala has got Impala, a very good... Yeah. Uh, the Fusion is pretty good. Too. ...wrap recently. Um, and of course, the Corvette, I think, is going to star because it's so, it's priced so well. I know it's a lot of car for uh, not that much money. I can't wait to drive that. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Well, Peter, thank you very much thank for you. your time, and uh, we'll wait for that list, and uh, we'll see we'll see you at uh, other shows and in New York for the big announcement next year. Yes, for certain. See you there. Thank you very thank much. Thank you. Esa fue la entrevista con Peter Lyon. Pueden encontrar sus uh, eh, publicaciones en Motor Trend, en Auto US Express, uh, en, en Inglaterra, en Autobleed, en muchos sitios. Así que busquen a Peter Lyon, eh, uno de los colegas del World Car of the Year Award. Y ya regresamos en esta edición especial de Auto 060 con Nissan 360.